It sounds like you're, you like lost your mind from Rainforest Cafe or something. You trying to, is this what's gonna happen? You're gonna break me? <laughs> you're gonna break me during the interview? This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla because sometimes existing is exhausting. And if you wanna watch an extended version of this interview where Eddie and I get way deeper into everything, click the join button down below to support this channel. But before we get into this episode, we have some very exciting news. We are launching a new show on this channel called Assumptions next week. On this new show, instead of having me talk with these guests individually, we're gonna have all the guests sit down with each other. I'm really excited for you to see it next week and I'll be giving you a little bit more information on what that show is gonna be like later in this episode. But for now, let's get to Eddie Burback, shall we? Hello, Eddie Burback. Hello. Hello. I hooked my finger in your in your bracelet. I, I felt it. it yeah, me little, too. It was a little intimate. Yeah. yeah I felt kind of feel connected. In other ways, in you know. In very deep, intimate ways. Do you like being praised for being tortured? I wouldn't I wouldn't call it being tortured if you're talking about video stuff for me. It's more, you know, I like... I was talking about a kink thing, but yeah, also... Oh, okay. Oh, well, huh. Also the videos. Would you say you produce many documentaries about getting tortured? I, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mini torture docs. <laughs> well, for anyone that doesn't know, I just want to point out that you made three specifically that come to mind. You made a mini doc about seeing and reviewing the movie Morbius five times. Mm -hmm. You traveled the country and visited every single rainforest cafe. Yep. And you also traveled the country this year and visited every single Margaritaville right. in the country. I mean, that's torture. It's more of a coincidence, weirdly enough, though, because the Morbius one, that was just a really dumb bit idea I had. Morbius was about to leave theaters. I went home to Chicago and was telling people that, like, I told my dad, I told a couple, like, my brother, and, and the reaction was nice from everyone, but they, I, I could tell that they were being nice and they didn't really get it. Oh, and when you it were like, here's the idea I have yeah, for a video? Yeah, they're like, okay. My dad said, I think my dad was like, why? Why would you do that? <laughs> and uh, it was, you know, just because I thought it was funny. But then uh, with the Rainforest trip, Ted actually asked me to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and that was Ted's idea. And so both of those trips kind of fell, it's just, I fell into place where I was making videos where I was miserable. <laughs> so you're producing it on the road, you're booking places on the road, you're shooting it, you're having to figure out what the edit's gonna look like, you're coming up with a narrative, all kind of on the fly. Yeah, it kind of consumes your whole life. It's fun, but yeah. Uh, yeah, the way I described it to some people for the process of those, or even the Morbius one, I guess kind of what I make now, is like laying down the train tracks while the train is moving, and yeah. it can be really fun, but also it's, uh, it's a bit more stressful when you're trying to make something that's good, because you're like, you know, you really have to roll with the punches. You'll have an idea. Say you wanted to be really unhappy with one of the restaurants and you go to one and it's awesome. Like you yeah. kind of have to change that on the fly. There's a bit of fiction in it, obviously. You can tell because it's like I didn't really fully lose my mind. You know, I'm editing it myself as well with music yeah. and everything. So. Although you are bound to lose your mind a little bit if you're going to Rainforest Cafe. Yeah, yeah. Day. I have both times lost my mind. My theory is that Ted lost his mind long ago. Mm. Ted's Ted's in another, he's just he's just happy to be there. Right. You know, I think this one was a little bit more taxing, but last time especially, like, he was, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the <laughs> light. What? Sorry, I got, you flashing me? What? Wait, now that you're not, am I, I'm being gaslit on your show? It sounds like you're, you like lost your mind from Rainforest Cafe or something. You're yeah. trying to, is this what's gonna happen? You're gonna break me? <laughs> you're gonna break me during the interview? <laughs> you're gonna slowly Fuck, break me down? I was gonna see how long I could. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, I wouldn't believe that the light was flashing? <laughs> I was gonna see how long I could just keep going. I wasn't just gonna <laughs> pretend for a second. I was like, you know, it's flashing. I'm, I'm looking at you, and I can still see the light because I look directly at it. So. Is, that, is this what your Rainforest Cafe experience was like? Yeah, it psychologically broke me down. <laughs> so you could just, you know, you're going going by your life, you're having your interviews, and you just can't stop seeing the, the flashing lights, the thunderstorm noises, mm. the Rainforest Cafe, you know, you have to get your stomach pumped. Like, there's so much trauma involved mm -hmm. in creating these these things. Were there any actual longer effects besides you seeing things that don't exist? No, I mean, we, <laughs> the light's still going. <laughs> the, weirdly enough, uh, it's just gonna actually break me. Now that it's acknowledged, you're like, just keep flashing it <laughs> until it's like, just it makes him go crazy. Cue the flash, cue the flash, <laughs> keep it going. It's like the water drip, you know? <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna just like completely change my story and be like, 
What, I never addressed that. I didn't what, do that. You're inventing things in your mind. You're dreaming. Start like throwing quarters at me the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Someone in a gorilla outfit's gonna come out and attack you next. I hope oh you're prepared God. for that. I'm ready. I'm always ready for that. Oh yeah? You have to be. After you experience it, you put yourself through the most grueling torture of, of doing these things. <laughs> you're prepared for anything now. Yeah, I mean, well, one thing I do want to acknowledge is like, it is a lot of work, but also it's like, most people's jobs are harder than what we're doing. Yeah. And some people will be like, Jesus Christ, like, if I got to drive around the whole country, I wouldn't be complaining. It's like, it's oh. for the video, you know? Like, yeah. I am, I, it, obviously it is, like, pretty taxing and kind of, it's weird to do the same thing so repetitively, but it's also not, like, as hard as when we're driving this often, like, just people who are truckers and, yeah. and driving that constantly for work, you it know? It is monotonous work. Yeah. You want people to, to point out the frustrating elements when they're frustrating. Yeah, because they're funny, you know? Like, yeah. it's it's really dumb to complain that you went to go see a Jared Leto <laughs> movie five days in a row. And I think he has a cult or something. Yeah. I shouldn't say that mm, exactly. Yeah, do you want to add any legal disclaimer to that? Uh, yeah, Allegedly. I don't know what I'm talking about, and I'm dumb, and uh, mm. whatever I say doesn't go. I could say, you, if you could say anything you want, if you say allegedly. There you go. I think he allegedly has a cult. There you go. But I haven't looked into it a lot, so that's actually on me for saying it so publicly. That's true, but it's just alleged. It's alleged. Yeah, you can say anything you allegedly, want. Allegedly, I think you have a cult, Anthony, Oh, right? yeah. Allegedly, I think that you have been stalking me and you found out what I was going to wear and you showed up today wearing the exact outfit that I'm wearing just to f with me. That's allegedly. not alleged. That did happen. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad we could address it here today. Yeah. I've also seen you naked. Oh. Just gonna take a sip of water real quick. So, you. Oh, that was a big sip. <sighs> and that was not behind a paywall. That's just that wasn't the water. Our, the, the naked view. Oh no, that, was, that well, wasn't behind it wasn't my paywall. Through a paywall. It was through your real wall through a window. Hmm. Hmm. Um, one thing I forgot to get into is, I'm really curious to know if there was anything, because I haven't heard you talk about your childhood too much, if mm -hmm. there's anything from your childhood that you think contributes or has contributed to you putting so much pressure on yourself with each upload. Hmm. Instead, like you, you told me that you're, you're, basically your mental health is attached to these things doing, doing well and being great. And yeah, I think it's mainly, uh, that is definitely during the creative process of it. Like once I put something out, I will be kind of less concerned about the reaction. If somebody doesn't like something, I, I think I'm a little bit better if I get like a negative comment of kind of letting it roll off. But it's the idea of doing this for a while now. And like, I, I was really worried and after I had hit a couple of years of doing it, kind of deserving the job I have, you know what I mean? Mm. Of like making, it, if you're allowed to work uh, and make art at, for your job, it's like you also want to be able to to support that on your own end. Like people are supporting you and you wanna make sure that you make stuff that is kind of worthy of it. When I was younger, I would do like sports and a lot of stuff and I was always like pretty baseline mediocre at it. And I feel like YouTube was like the first thing that I was feeling like I was starting to get really good at. And then I think I'm getting past it now, but I was overly concerned with that going away, that kind of outlet going away, less so than like views or anything. Right. Um, I think it honestly did push me into to growing creatively, but also it's, yeah, it's not great to put that kind of pressure on yourself. Cause also there is no, uh, imposter syndrome, I feel like is something that everybody uh, gets in pretty much every prof profession for the most part. Like, do I deserve this? Yeah, or like um, a lot of people that I talk to that do even YouTube feel like they're total frauds and they, they just barely scrape a video together and then they put it out there and people are like, oh, this is great. And you know, they feel like they just barely shit out that video onto the platform. Yeah. You and know? in a way, your your mind almost thinks that all the stress and worry that you had leading up to it is the reason that you barely scraped Right, it. yeah. So you almost feel like you need to have that negative self-talk and shame yourself and guilt, guilt yourself and tell yourself that you need to be better and that you're a worthless piece of shit in yeah. order for you to create something barely good enough. But yeah, it's a balance, yeah, because yeah. it's like, Doing that all the time, I, I, a lot of the time what'll help me is I'll have those thoughts and then um, I will think in my head, you're, a, in this voice, you're a YouTuber. And it'll help me a lot more. Where it's like, okay. not to disrespect the platform or the job, but it's like, 
I'm not doing something like a doctor saves lives. You're saying it's not that serious. Yeah, it's not because I'm, you know, editing me drinking a bunch of margaritas <laughs> at the end of the day. Like it's not that <laughs> serious, you know? Like It is pretty funny though, thinking that it is the most important piece of art in human history. Yeah. And it's you getting uh, a hangover from drinking too many margaritas. I was so consumed by the work of that video that I even told friends I would go like out with a group of friends and they'd ask me how I've been lately and I would just spend the whole day editing. And so I would like short circuit and my brain would just think like, uh, a, a margarita. <laughs> like there was nothing going on up here. Yeah. Um, You're like self-reflection. Yeah. I haven't yeah. had time to think about that. I mean, you said that you kind of feel like the, the, the mental turmoil that you went through was necessary to get it there? Only a bit of it, I think. I think I'm uh, I'm trying, I'm, I go a little extreme sometimes, but also it's the group that I kind of hang out with. We are very close, especially um, Jakey and Drew Gooden are both like really close friends of mine. And also we make stuff that is not super similar, but um, similar in ways of, of how hard we work on it and how long we might be gone for a while. Uh, and it's really helpful to talk about those things with them. Because yeah. especially when I first was struggling creatively with this stuff, um, Jakey and I had like a really good conversation that kind of like changed the course of me making stuff. It was like back in 2019, I was talking to Jakey about how I just kind of wanted to do what I wanted to do, but I felt like I was kind of making an expectation for doing commentary stuff. Um, and he was like, man, you should just go for it. And I, and I did, and I started skewing things a little bit more to like random topics about things. It must be difficult working on things that require a month of your time. I mean, I mean more than a month of your time mm. in, in the case of the Margaritaville episode. This one was so, the longest one. That was so much of your time. And that's the only thing that you release for that X amount of time. You're spending so much time and energy. You're producing it on, on the go. You are editing it on the go. You are figuring out the narrative and you're weaving in uh, jokes throughout. I think mainly it's, I'm jealous of anybody who can find, uh, that can uh, have somebody edit their stuff. Cause oh. that I wish, but like it's too important to kind of my process mm -hmm. for me to give it up. But man, it is, it's a lot sometimes, especially when you're the focus of what you're editing. Yeah, you can only really consistently have an editor there working by your side on your content, learning your voice, when the money that they're receiving from it is paying for their livelihood. Right, and which is crazy, because like I think you were saying that you don't pay your editors, right? No, 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 no. They, uh, I'll, pay them, I'll pay them later. Okay, because when, we when we were walking in before we came in the studio, you yeah. were bragging like, I pay these guys basically nothing. Yeah, no, not basically. I literally pay them nothing. Okay. They're all interns. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and eventually they'll, they'll make it somewhere in the industry somewhere, maybe if I credit them, but mm -hmm. I usually don't do that either. That's great. Yeah, yeah. normally, I, I think the best thing to do when somebody's exploiting labor is to say that's smart business. Yes, oh, it's a good business move. Oh, yeah. great business. Yeah, and then withhold praise as well. Yeah. It works really well Why because you then- you praise them? Yeah, yeah, and they're always, they have, you know, keeps them holding on to the hope of maybe someday I will be acknowledged. Yeah, maybe you'll get a compliment, but for now you're just flashing lights and making them go insane. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that little stunt that we did with you, um, that's not we, new. You that's you're just pulling out the old tricks. Yes. I heard that you turned the temperature in here to 150. Yeah, yeah. Which but in, just for like a minute. Yeah, which in LA is just turning off the air conditioner and opening up the oven door. Right. <laughs> yeah, you're putting all of yourself into this mm -hmm. for a certain amount of time, knowing full well that if it doesn't perform well, if the algorithm doesn't like it, if your audience doesn't like it, you don't have your next video planned out. You just dedicated all that time to one thing that could. In theory, depending on how you look at it, flop. You uh, you sound like the voice in my head all the time. <laughs> that sounds exactly like. So you have those thoughts. I do sort of, yeah, but I do. I think um, I don't know. I want to uh, make good stuff. That's what I care about the most. But I've always had this feeling, where a bunch of uh, creative people that I respect usually disappear for a while and then come back with. A, it's like kind of a relationship with the audience of like. I'm not gonna show you something unless I worked really hard on it. Um, and that's kind of what I've fallen into doing because I, I feel way more like creatively, I'm kind of riding a wave and just waiting to see whatever thing is gonna take me next, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know, that just feels more exciting than when I was doing stuff a little bit more consistently. But yeah. to be honest, 
even when I was doing commentary, compared to everybody else, I was not doing it consistently. I would have people telling me, like, you don't upload enough, and your channel is going to die within a year. Mm -hmm. like, like, a lot of comments. They were like, why doesn't Eddie upload enough? And right. it's like, what is enough? I don't know, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I think that there was just an expectation that it needs to be weekly or more. I think when, yeah, especially when people like somebody online, they want to see them do well. Yeah. And they see people who are doing well are posting all the time, but also doing well just doesn't exactly mean your subscriber numbers are going up and, and the, you know, the ad revenue for your channel is going up. Mm -hmm. You know, I, that's just not what doing well as a person is, you know? No. It's doing well as a YouTube channel, but also I'm not, um, a YouTube channel. I'm a person. I got legs. And just as a reminder, our new show, Assumptions, is premiering next Thursday. The first episode is going to be with trans athletes who are going to be discussing all the assumptions that they hear about them every single day. And also, I'd like to introduce you to my producer, Nicole, who's been working closely with me to develop this series and make this new show happen. Hi, y'all. I've been behind the camera at Press Lake for years. I was the person queuing that flashing light on Eddie Burback. Basically, I was girl bossing so Anthony could gaslight. Mm -hmm. I've actually been on this show before, too. Y'all might remember me from the I Spent a Day with Trans Women episode. Yeah, you are the only person that we work with that has been in an episode. I know, how'd that happen? <laughs> so it was perfect for you to take charge in creating a show because you've been there in the guest seat before. And we have more Assumptions episodes episodes coming out, including openly gay pastors, asexuals, and furries. Yep, all pretty fun gay stuff. Can I say gay? It's the fun gay stuff? For this specific instance, I'll allow it, yeah. Thank you. You also mentioned to me, though, that there will be parts of the process where you really are questioning. You know, like, is this going to do well? Is it going to satisfy people? Are yeah. people going to be disappointed? It's more so, yeah, about it being good. I, um, which is subjective. Yeah, right, of course. During the editing process, the kind of negative self talk is pretty bad. Um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty brutal to myself, but also I do think. Part of that is a good voice when you're trying to make something better, you know? When I was almost done with the Margaritaville thing, I had been pretty much telling myself that I was making a movie because it's an hour long yeah, um, and it's a road trip. I just thought of it as more of like a road trip movie than just a YouTube video. Um, and Ted did as well. We both took it pretty seriously. Toward the end, I wasn't satisfied with how I was wrapping it up. And for a couple of days, I was convinced like, yeah, I'm just gonna trip over the finish line here. I spent so much time on this. This sucks. I'm not happy with how it all ties together. Um, but that voice did make me restructure it and I made it into something that I felt better about. Yeah. So it's kind of, I don't know, it's not good for my brain, but it's good for the for the stuff I made. <laughs> it's good for the content. Yeah. <laughs> well, there, there is a balance though, because if you get so caught up in the negative self-talk that it destroys you yeah. and you just want to recede into the fetal position and not work on the project, yeah. not find the solution, that's really negative. But it sounds like that negative self-talk I mean, it sounds like you maybe dwell on it for a little bit, but then yeah. you apply the problem solver. I'm usually pretty aware that it's, I'm being too brutal, but uh, it's the voice is kind of still there when it's happening. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just because you really care. Yeah, that's. I think that's really it, especially because it was the mo the longest I'd worked on something. It's just like a lot of time, especially when you've done it once before. Honestly, when you do a sequel to something, the pressure to make it worth it to me is really big yeah. because uh, I don't want to just do something again for the sake of it getting views. I don't know, if you're doing something again, you got to really make sure there's a reason to do Especially it. Especially if there's a fan base for it. And right. they're, I guess they're expecting something. So there's a much higher chance of them being disappointed. Yeah, the nice thing is nobody expected us to be so dumb to do this shit again. Yeah. Nobody, and that's, I was very excited. I told uh, Ted, we, I was really, I was glad he, he, we both did it. We were completely silent uh, about the fact that we went on the trip. You weren't teasing it. Yeah, teasing it. and because I had told him, like, think about the the just reaction once the videos show up mm -hmm. of, what, like, why would you do this a second time, mm -hmm. you know? It was great. It was great to see people react to it. That kind of made a lot of it worth it, was seeing people surprised that we would do it again. But also now, yeah, we're, when people ask for another, it's like, not only do I think we kind of creatively uh, spent everything there, but also if you're expecting it, it's not a fun surprise. Yeah, you people know? are begging for the third one. Yeah. Already. The yeah. second one just came out. Which I, in the video, a bunch, I'm like, this is, this is the final one. I'd love to work on something else creatively. And 
I think maybe the fact that I said it was the final one really pumped some some gas into people asking for one more. Do you think you could be pushed to do a third one if enough people harassed you enough? Stalking. No. No. no? Absolutely not. If, if people <laughs> comment more, that will not. But that will in fact do comment, the opposite. If they comment less, is there a higher chance of you doing it? Probably. One? Oh, but, you hear that? Harassing less yields more results. Stop asking me. <laughs> okay. I'm happy that people are asking. It means they <laughs> liked it. But uh, those two were very specific in um, why they were funny to me. Yeah. You know, like Ted loved Rainforest Cafe. Um, I actually don't mind it. It's you know, it's like it's it's really funny how annoying that restaurant is when you're not seeing flashing lights out of the corner of your eye that don't actually exist. Right. Exactly. And they're not going to happen again. No. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> 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 but um, <laughs> then they're not going to keep going. No, they would never. Of keep course, going. they yeah, would. Like, they would not happen right now. The, no, and they wouldn't. That's see, it, see, see yeah, you're right. It's all fine. Dang, I'm proud of you. So, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> although I will say, sometimes a push from an audience does remind you, especially when it's been years. Mm -hmm. Like maybe you'll go years and see that people are still excited about it, and you'll find some inspiration. Yeah, there's. I'm. Um, that's. I would never say full no to it. You mm -hmm. know, it's um, just especially where people are like, where are you going next summer? And it's mm -hmm. like, next summer I want to maybe work on something different creatively and also not disappear from everyone in my life for a full month, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it was a lot easier this time because the first time when we disappeared for three weeks, trying to explain that when the video didn't exist to people oh, in true. my life was so weird. Where I'd be like, yeah, we're making this video where we're, I, we're not coming home for three weeks to go to every rainforest cafe. And some people would think it was so funny, but like... It's a national tour. Yeah. It was it was way easier the second time to be like, oh, we're doing another one of those videos. Yeah. And they've already seen the success. Right. Because how many views is that one? That the I don't know. I don't know. The rainforest care. cafe. I think it had 8 million views. I actually don't know. And the Margaritaville one, I think, has five so far. Right. So that means that this one probably was more successful more quickly because it had a fan base? Yeah, I think so. Also, I, I think since then, um, I've kind of completely changed up what I'm, I've been doing. I don't really foster like a community because I'm not, uh, other than maybe people who watch like Burback stuff and my stuff, but um, I like more the relationship of like, hey, I'm gonna bring something to you when I really, really care about it and hopefully you'll check it out. I Spent a Day With is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you ever feel like your brain is getting in its own way? Like you know what you should do or what's good for you, but you just can't seem to do it? Therapy helps you figure out what's holding you back so you can work for yourself instead of against yourself. As I'm sure many of you know, I've been a huge advocate of therapy since I started going about six years ago. It's helped me in almost every facet of my life, whether dealing with anxiety or depression or just the day-to-day -day struggles of being human, therapy has been a guiding light for me. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash Padilla. Now back to the world of Eddie Burback. I also have a question in here that's under its entire own uh, section called mustache. It's, uh, is that the only, is that the question? And no, the question is how did, how did you mustache? It was not planned. No. Um, I, a friend of mine uh, grew out a mustache when uh, we were working our concessions job at a water park. Mm. It was a really good mustache. And I was like, I really want to try it, but I can't go for just the mustache. I've never really let my facial hair grow out. So I grew an awful beard. That um, beard also went into the first kind of bit of YouTube that I was doing. It, it's around back there. It, it looked terrible. And I tried to just go for the mustache once. I used to brush it to the side. It didn't look right. Mm. I didn't know how to manage it. Mm. And then one day I just kind of started grooming it like this. I was like, oh, actually, I think this kind of works hits, for me. And then now you're live action Mario. Yeah, now I'm live action Mario. Uh, I was Luigi for Halloween this oh, last Oh, shit. Year. Yeah. I peg you. I shouldn't say I peg you. Let me no, try. Go ahead. I should start with you my You pegged me, I and pe then we continue. Okay, I pegged you and peg you uh -huh. as more of a Mario. Huh. Do you, do you peg yourself as more of a I, Luigi? I think of myself as a Luigi because. I think of my own brother as a Mario, mm. and, and uh, also I'm a little bit taller than my brother. So okay, take that's that, fair. Tony. That's I told fair. everybody. So now you've gone down the path of creating things that are more true to things that interest you yeah. uh, creatively. If you had an infinite budget, what do you think that you would create? 
I think what would make me um, expand something that I was would be making would be working with uh, a lot of talented people on something, which also, you know, in the industry, money does do that. I think you can really lift up and elevate your stuff when, I mean, you know, when you have other people who are really competent working with you mm -hmm. because it's, the one man show thing is fun a lot, but I think I will try to move towards some stuff that would be like, I guess, a bigger production. Is there anything that you wish that you would have known going into creating content? Because I feel like a lot of this career requires you to learn the hard way. So many movies, TV shows, like YouTubers, any like type of entertainment has kind of given so much to me, not only personally or uh, or experiences with people in my life, like friends and family. I just wanted to be a part of that. I didn't really fully think through how much you're putting yourself out there. Um, I think I've gotten better at it now, but I remember like um, being... <laughs> like kind of annoying on a podcast in my first year. Mm. And that those comments like really me up for like a day or two. Because people are criticizing you? Or? Yeah, it was just like, uh, I think it was that um, I maybe like interrupted somebody one, one too many times, but it was honestly good because it made me like be more thoughtful about not interrupting people in conversation. Mm. Yeah, people really do like to point that out. <laughs> it's, it's frustrating to listen to. I kind of get it. That's true. Um, but also I think uh, when you're listening to a conversation, even if you're somebody who's like interrupted, it doesn't feel that bad. But if it's you're different. hearing it. It's different when it's when it's content that's being consumed and you're watching it from the outside looking yeah. in. Like uh, one thing that I get criticized for that I've worked on is saying, mm, mm-hmm, yeah. To, to people when they're speaking. I've been thinking about how I've been doing that to you this whole time. <laughs> I feel like that's just natural when you're having a conversation. You don't even realize that it's happening when you're doing it or when someone else is doing it. But when you're watching from the outside or when you're listening to a podcast, it's like you become fixated on these kinds of things. I just tried so hard not to do it while you're, I just wanted to go, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's especially difficult when you are relating. Yeah. And yeah. I said it again. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. But it is difficult. You know, you have to learn almost uh, a different etiquette when you're, when you are on camera. Exactly. For, for all different types of things, the, the way you converse, the way you behave, and I feel like that is difficult to uh, to learn that the hard way. There's no there's no one that tells you. I don't think I was kind of prepared for even if you acknowledge kind of parasocial relationships, the idea of giving up a lot of your like childhood stories and everything d is cool for people to kind of get inside jokes on your life and everything. But also after, after the fact, I kind of looked back and was like, I think I would have maybe kept a couple of these things just for me, you know, for the most part. Yeah. I'd hear somebody reference like something I did when I was four. I'm like, I said that <laughs> somewhere? What the f Yeah. And it was an embarrassing story too. People pay attention. I was in a bunk bed. My brother. Oh, I, I'm glad you're telling me. Yeah, now. I'll say. Yeah, I'll I wasn't going to ask now. you to tell the embarrassing story, but you know, let's go. I shared a room with my brother my uh, whole life, uh, a nine by ten room with a bunk bed in it, um, and I got sick when I was like four, and I didn't. I I threw up over the wrong side. I threw up over the wall side. What the. I was like four, I didn't know. So Stupid four-year-old, My bro. brother woke up to like the grossest thing ever. <laughs> it's disgusting. And so he still reminds me of it sometimes. Nice. So and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to criticize you and think about you only as that four-year-old and I'm never going to expand my uh, way of thinking about <laughs> you. I can't believe you did that, you disgusting piece of shit. I look like a shocking four-year-old if that's what you're going to think of me as. Yeah, you look like a... I could see you as a four-year-old. You think you think I could pass as four? <laughs> 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 you know what's interesting to me is that... Obviously, you know, with Smosh stuff, I uh, watched it. I, to be honest, I think the first couple of videos I watched online was my sister showing me Smosh stuff. Oh, shit. And I think it's funny that I was watching it in maybe like, I think I was in like fourth grade. And now I, I think I look older than you. And I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think if, if you it's compare the show, I, right? I, it is, it is. <laughs> but if you like showed a photo of you back then and you now, I think you look relatively the same. I think if you showed a photo of me then and me now, I look like I would kidnap that boy. <laughs> I look like a horrible, it's like, what happened to that kid, that pure kid? <laughs> well, too much Smosh content will fuck you up. Yeah. It'll age you. I think the mustache thing, a lot of people will be like, I'll say I'm my age in a video, and they're like, yeah. holy shit, I can't believe I'm older than you. It's like, yeah, if I shaved, I'd look younger. It's yeah, the mustache. Yeah, it's the mustache. And the, the, the tagline could be, you know, taking a little cue from Papa John's, it could be shitty ingredients, 
shitty people. Okay. Yeah. So it's sort of like a, is it one of the restaurants like where they're, they're mean to the customers? Um, I think the, I think the people who show up there to eat are pretty shitty. Oh, okay. So they get to be shitty to the workers. They get to be shitty to the workers. You get to go and abuse the workers yeah. at my restaurant. <laughs> yeah, but you're eating really shitty food. So you just like, you feel deserved. <laughs> what do we pay them? <laughs> They're like, who would want to work there? <laughs> no, but here's the thing. The workers are compensated incredibly well. Okay. Incredibly well. Okay, Health so insurance, maybe into benefits, $75 an hour. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can I work there? <laughs> <laughs> but they also get shit on constantly. So it's, I a, mean, you know, so being like being a creator online. Yeah. And also don't forget next Thursday, we're premiering our new show assumptions, starting with trans athletes. You're not going to want to miss it.